Hello, my name is Arthur and in this video we're going to be looking at getting the main gun turret able to rotate in the direction of a target. So we probably won't actually get to a bullet coming out of it yet because I'm not set up for that quite yet and that will require um, either making a new shell or fixing the shell I have. So what I've done is I've scaled the crate down and instanced one on the scene so that's going to be the target so to scale the crate i just ex scaled the two spatials explode in pieces and then changed the collision shape size so hopefully that'll all work out so the last thing i want to do to the crate is to put it into layer six and that will be the layer that things the player shoot at is in that way we don't need any groups or anything we'll just use a layer to do that so on the tank we're going to need a number of things we're going to need a radius to detect things so we'll need an area and a collision shape to go with it so we'll throw it in area Let's change that to detect area. That'll work. And we'll add in a collision shape. Now the collision shape, oh geez, I'm not sure what to do with that. For now I'm going to use try a cylinder shape. That seems to make the most sense to me. Although a sphere also makes sense in a way. So I'm kind of up in the air on that one. So here's some things to consider. I want to have hills. So he's going to have to target things that are below him. I might want to have a helicopter and have that 50, mil 50 caliber um, browning take pot shots at the helicopter. So the size of the size of the detection radius is a little bit unclear. So for now, all I can do really is experiment and come up with what works, what gives the game some balance. And that's what it all breaks down to really is giving the game some balance. So I'm going to try it around there and change it at need. So when I think it needs to be changed, I'll change it. So what we're going to need from that area is first off, we want to change its collision. It doesn't need to be seen. And the only place it needs to look is layer six, because that's where we're going to put all the stuff the player shoots at. Then we're going to need to hook up a couple of signals. So we'll need body entered and body exited. So we'll connect these. and body exited connect okay so we're going to need some variables to go along with that so we'll need one that would be um an array so let's call that all targets <clears throat> Well, we'll just call it targets and that will equal an array and then we'll go variable we've already used target um, well let's just change target here let's underscore that and that way I can use target and that one will just set to null which we don't actually have to type we can just leave it target and then it is null so what we'll do with that is so we have what did we do we have targets and target well hopefully that's not confusing so 
on body entered we want to push the body into the targets array so we'll go targets dot push back body um yeah we'll use push back because if we push front each time a new body enters the detect radius the unit will start targeting the new body and that can become that can become something that gets used against a uh, unit because that's a fatal flaw that gives that gives an intruding body the ability to control the targeting of the unit then on body exited what we got to do is make a variable and we'll make a variable instead of a variable variable delete equals um, targets dot find body and well I'm pretty sure that targets dot remove Dell should work and if it doesn't work if it actually comes up with um, a situation where a body that's in that array somehow gets out of that array in some other fashion than exiting the detect area then then something is going wrong okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to look at the turret now it's going to need something the same idea as the compass for the tank body um, we're going to just do the exact same thing we're going to add in a uh, position 3d we're going to call it compass And it will do the same job so that leaves us at getting a direction now we already have a function to get direction and we don't want to have a function for get direction for this and get direction for that this one function should be able to do it so what we'll do with this is we're going to pass it the applicable compass so we'll just underscore compass and then we'll pass it a position so here we're going to put underscore compass here we're going to put position Here we'll put underscore compass. Here we're going to return direction. Else we'll return zero. So that leaves um, rotation degrees hanging here. So this is going to get cut out of there. And let's see, it's going to get pasted into here. Now we're going to create a local variable for direction. Um, equals null here we're gonna go direction equals get direction 
and because this is tank turning we'll pass it dollar sign compass comma destination so now we should be able to rotate the tank um, let's see somewhere around down here we're going to check if targets dot size is greater than zero target equals targets zero dot transform Target zero transform dot origin. <clears throat> and that should work. Then we would direction equals get direction dollar sign um, body. turret compass comma target and then dollar sign body turret dot rotation degrees dot y plus equals direction and if direction equals zero print bang bang you're dead because we don't have a shell to shoot so we'll just confirm that we're able to target down to um let's see oh i've already changed the tolerance on direction i was experimenting with that already so i've reduced the tolerance on direction to one and minus one and it's entirely possible that i'll discover that the tank needs a different tolerance than the guns in which case I will pass a third um, number to get direction so we'd pass the, a third argument and maybe make some constants for gun tolerance and and tank tolerance for the rotation purposes so that we can ditch the magic numbers So, I'm pretty sure that's everything, and I think that should work. So, we'll want to drive him down in a way that we can be certain he's targeting, and actually see his turret turning towards the target. So, yeah, he's definitely targeting. The turret's probably a little too fast. So let's just move it over here. And yeah, for the sake of gameplay, um, I'd imagine the turret is too fast. Because when those things are shooting back, um, they're going to have the same functionality. So if there's an enemy, an enemy tank, um, the idea of it, yeah, we're using turn here. Uh, 
Oh, I haven't even used that, have I? No. So what I would do with that is, um... <clears throat> yeah, it should probably be turn speed and turret speed. And then, um, rotation degrees plus equals direction times turret speed. Now it's going to complain, hey, there's no variable called turret speed. Actually, let's, I'm in a camel case, that kind of deal. So I'll do it like this and put it as a constant. So let's cut that in a quarter. So now the speed should go at 25% of what it was. So we'll drive them down here, then up here, and then we'll get an idea for that. If that slowed down, it slowed them down a bit. Which undoubtedly it has. Yeah, that slows down the turret and gets it more into realistic. Because that turret shouldn't move that fast. So yeah, the next thing that we'd be um, looking at is what kind of distance, what kind of range the gun should have, and if I put the range out far enough, how to target um, the elevation of the tar of the turret. So in the next video, we'll get a shell onto it and get them shooting something and see if we can blow the crate up. And until then, take care.